Hello and welcome to HR Talk, where this week we'll be discussing employee engagement. The government-backed Employee Engagement Task Force was established in March last year and today I'm joined by Nita Clark, its Deputy Chair. Hello Nita. Hello. Nita is also Director of the IPA and was recently appointed the new Vice President for Employee Relations at the CIPD. Nearly a year on from the launch of the Employee Engagement Task Force, what do you feel it has achieved so far? Well, we spent the first year really building up the resources because, as you know, we're not funded by the government. So we've been building up the resources and the support from the task force and the sponsor group. And now we've got a fantastic team of, of people helping us. Uh, the task force members have been doing a lot of work looking at I issues like how you do employee engagement in a recession, uh, you know, what the killer facts are that can convince CEOs and finance uh, directors. Um, what the challenges are, what some of the barriers are that people experience. And we're hoping that in the next couple of months, we're going to have a launch which will look at some of that work that the task force has been doing. We've also, we're very fortunate that Thomson Reuters have agreed to set up, uh, to underwrite and help us set up the uh, website that we are hoping will be one of our big legacies. So a website that will not just be a resource for people, but will also be interactive where people can go and get... Uh, talk to other professionals, uh, other people in, in perhaps other disciplines like comms or as well as HR and OD to, to talk about engagement. So that's a, been a big deal trying to, to get that developed. And we've also uh, got a fantastic practitioners network that's being developed. And, and anybody watching this who wants to play a part, and you know, please do get in touch with the task force. And how has the employee engagement agenda moved on since the report from yourself and David McLeod in 2009? Well, I think the salience of the issue you know, has really come up the business agenda and the performance agenda. I mean, I think people know increasingly that how they treat people at work you know, really is going to be a crucial factor in the success of the organisation. I, mean, I think there's much more understanding of, of the importance of, of culture at work, of whether you have an environment in which people are encouraged and enabled to give of their best, you know, or whether you're still stuck in the old sort of command and control method, which, which really doesn't work anymore, because I think today's people at work today, particularly younger people, you know, are just not prepared to hand their brains on the door when they come in and just uh, do what the boss says. I mean, I think that, that one of the reasons employee engagement is, is gone up the agenda is because it really highlights the fact that you, you, you have to treat people differently at work if you want to get the best out of them. What would you say to organisations who feel they might need to focus on survival rather than engagement initiatives in these tough economic times? I'd say that engagement is how you survive. Employee engagement isn't something else you have to do. It's about understanding how you change the organisation to put people at its heart. I mean, at the end of the day, it's the people, stupid. Uh, you know, as to paraphrase Bill Clinton, because when you think about it, every other, everything else like IT and process, it's all very standardised. What, what makes your organisation different from any other? What gives you your competitive edge or your performance edge if you're in the public sector is the people who work for you. And if you can organise your workplace, if you can develop a style of, of culture, of, of a way of being, you know, which enables and encourages people to absolutely give of their best, because they are committed to the organisation, they understand its values, you know, then, then you really do release something absolutely transformational. And that's why I, I, I think the people who think that it's something else you have to do are kind of missing the point. And if you look back at the last recession, organisations got through really difficult times, actually the many of them by really fundamentally engaging their workforces in a way that they'd never done before. And finally, many organisations use employee engagement surveys. What are your thoughts on the pros and cons of these? I think surveys can be very valuable with certain provisos. I think, firstly, they're only as good as the questions that you ask. And, and I think there's a tendency to ask 101 questions without really quite knowing why or what use you're going to make of the information. OK, so I think being absolutely clear what you want the survey for is really, really important. Uh, the second thing that's incredibly important is that you do something with the results because there is nothing more disengaging than spending an hour filling in uh, a questionnaire if you know full well that absolutely nothing is going to happen about it. 
See, the other thing I think is this. Look, the thing about um, surveys is that they tell you, they give you a snapshot, if you like, about how people say they're feeling at a particular point in time. What they don't do is tell you what you really need to know, which is why are people feeling like that. And so I think that, that they need to be supplemented by a lot more deep conversations with staff to really understand what the survey is telling you. Having said all of that, I do think that surveys can be very valuable. Firstly, because providing they're consistent, you can work out over time whether you're moving the dials on the things that you want to move the dials on. But you can also benchmark externally with similar organisations, and people do find that useful. Lisa, thank you very much for joining us today. It was a pleasure. That's all for this week, but until next time, take care.